Buccaneers capturing a ship. So long as Spain controlled the sea routes, her treasure ships returning from the New World were relatively safe. But when the Spanish Armada was defeated, the pirates, English, Dutch, French, began to intercept the streaming of returning treasures. These picturesque murderers and highwaymen of the sea came from all stations of life. They flourished in the 16th century, and on one occasion a pirate fleet is said to have captured at Veracruz, a booty worth 30 million. I am Morgan of Dem Studio. Okay, you guys, this is uh, Dem Studio's Dem Weird. We're picking up on Dartmoor Bees. Some of the evidence that we actually, not evidence, more stories that we found and put together for our little episodes that we have. So, in the summer of 2007, a strange creature was photographed near Dartmoor, Devonshire. Since that time, there have been no reported sightings. There have been tales of the Dartmoor Beast and the Beast of Exmoor. Hmm. A supposed big cat that roamed the area. Legend has it that a four-legged fiend with glowing eyes and blood-curdling howl stalks the very spot. Which makes these pictures of a mysterious creature taken near Hound Tor on Dartmoor more intriguing than ever. Seen only yards away from a party of school children, the animal has a thick shaggy coat, round ears, and large front limbs, which would be powerful enough to tear human flesh. Some say it's a wild dog or cat. More fanciful theories include wolverine or bear. I could kind of see that, actually. Could be a boar. Could honestly be anything. Whatever its identity, the beast of Dartmoor is giving some farmers sleepless nights because they fear it will prey on their stock. Falconer Martin Whitley, who photographed this creature, said, it was walking along a path about 200 yards away from me. It was black and gray and comparable in size to a miniature pony. It had very thick shoulders, a long thick tail with a blunt end, and small round ears. Its movements appeared feline, then bear-like sprang to mind. There was a party climbing on the tour opposite making a racket, but it, it ignored them completely. A pack of spectral dogs known as the Whist Hounds or Hounds of Hell is said to roam the area according to local folklore. <laughs> um, which inspired Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to write the Sherlock Holmes mystery, The Hounds of the Baskervilles. The author is said to have been inspired by the legend of Squire Richard Cabell, a keen hunter from Brook Manor, Buckfastly. The squire was rumored to have sold his soul to the devil and after he died on July 5th, 
1677, a phantom pack of black hunting dogs with glowing red eyes is said to have raced across Dartmoor on the night of his internment, breathing fire and howling at his tomb. According to local legend, the demonic hounds have roamed the moor ever since and can often be seen around the anniversary of his death prowling around the grave trying to get the promised soul for the devil. Pretty creepy. The founder of this national research network, Big Cats in Britain, Mark Fraser, said, It looks like a wolverine or a bear in some shots, and a big wild dog in others. It's a very strange animal. Mr. Whitley is adamant that the creature is not a wild dog. He added, I have worked with dogs all my life. And it was definitely not that. I have seen a collie-sized black cat in the area about 10 years ago. And it was not that. This was a lot bigger. Well, yeah, collie-sized creature. <laughs> Disappointingly, for those who possess a vivid imagination, the most likely explanation was that the beast is nothing more supernatural than a large and hairy wild boar. Dedhams? North Devonshire farmer Adam Dedhams lost more than a hundred of his stock of boar in December 2005, when animal rights activists raided his farm and destroyed fencing. Since then, more than half are thought to have died in road traffic accidents or been shot by farmers or hunters because pigs are delicious. But those who survived have bred up to 175 and are said to be roaming the wilds of Devon and Somerset. Honestly, if I was to ever see this creature, personally, I would just walk up to him and be like, what are you? I want to know. Tell me. Oh wait, animals can't talk. Unless it is supernatural, then it would, would be able to talk mentally to me, wouldn't it? But that's just, that's just one of my comments. Thank you and have a good night. And if you've enjoyed some of our work that you've seen here, please do me a favor and click there over on Patreon corner and you can see you can become a patron and for like a dollar a month you can uh, give me input on anything that you think would be good to continue on. So we do so much different things and it's hard to see what people want to see next. So become a contributor and as well as have an opinion on what we do next. Click on the subscribe and uh, hit the notification so you can know next time we have something new coming on. And uh, sorry for the uh, interruption, but back to the show.
Roll die 10. We're looking for a side effect that you've been starting to suffer. Four. Okay. Um, you've been feeling a, well, you're afraid it might be a cold or something. Your throat's been kind of sore. Um, occasionally your voice warbling. As far as like, you can't like, like almost like going through puberty. <clears throat> yeah, like, no, just kidding. <laughs> hey, you stepped into that one. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Now. Um, the reason this is brought up because you need to some because you are having an appointment today. Karen is your boss. She informs you. Uh, her name's Car uh, that uh, Karen Moran. She's the animal lab's boss, and there will be a meeting t later on today. It was going to be earlier, but apparently your appointment was made, and I don't have much to say on that. Um, but there will be appointment dealing with the lab situation later on. But for now, go to your appointment and take care of everything. And uh, have that new floozy of the, uh, you know, Linda, one that we have, in, the new intern. Oh, the hussy. Yeah, the one that really has, I don't know why she's here except for, I'm pretty sure She's friends with the um, owner's son or something. I don't know. It just seems too weird. She's probably doing them. Could be. But I need you to make sure he's left and she's, she's uh, noticed to sit the counter up top or front there. Keep an eye on everything. Take notes for you while you're off in your appointment. And she heads off. Um, give you a little idea. Karen's kind of... Uh, she doesn't always seem... <laughs> um, strong or loud or anything but she seems to be pretty accurate in what she plans in pretty simple basic things just she's quick about it she knows what needs to be done and uh, she cares for the animals you see that she hangs around the labs and stuff She's concerned when the breakout happened. So wants to know what happened. Now, on to your appointment. Warp stenches. And then what's your endurance? It's 57. My endurance is feeble. Holy shit! It can't focus. I bet you that's the problem. Camera's doing weird things. Okay. The system we're using is kind of like the classic Marvel superhero system, except for I added some additional stats down the human area, human range, to thicken that up a little bit and bring characters down to a more reasonable power level, especially for being a new world. So, your appointment today will be with Dr. Jonathan White. It will be here in, in this lab. He has a place. Um, also be there is Doug, the EKG um, full spectrum tech. He does EKG and he also runs a full spectrum on you so you can see how the, the bio energy on your body is doing. You, th you think it all sounds kind of hippie-ish really, but that's his job. And he's always been really nice to you. You know, he's been the same one you've had for most from the beginning. Um, but then there's someone new in the room. Who are you? She looks similar to Karen. Who are you? Sylvia. I run the uh, Dark Forces labs. Without radiation, there's negative effects we don't want to have happen. Those are qualified as Dark Forces, and my job is to study those. And Dr. White comes out. After... Oh, when you first entered the room, I should have stated, Dr. White was talking with Sylvia, and 
and seemed to be being really familiar with her, but she seemed to be kind of standoffish. Kind of like backup, you know, type thing. But like there's something going on between those two. Like some Bob Chickawawa? Maybe. Maybe there was. And it's not that. anymore. That's the problem. <laughs> okay. Have you laid down the table? First of all, they'll ask you, have you had any problems lately? Anything you feel out of the ordinary? I don't know if I should tell them. That's entirely up to you. Yeah. Okay. And that would be... Like some, uh... Like my voice is going through puberty again. Oh, hmm. Well, you do have a stone there, so it could be just inhibiting the uh, vocal cords, maybe, in some, or, you know. So, uh, we'll take a look at that. Let's pitch it in the spe spectrum. Put it on there. And that's when he seems to bring over Sylvia to look at the readout. They seem to be throwing a lot of attention towards, let's see what Demi can, well, I can't remember. Your left hand. Last gift to well, does it move all right? You don't feel stiffness in that hand or anything? No. Huh. The bio scan shows that there's a, uh, what we've best described in the past as when you scan someone who's paralyzed, like before this happened, in your scan, your whole body looked like this. Right now, only your left hand does, but you're saying it doesn't show any signs. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, and then he's like over there talking quietly to her again. Go ahead and roll percentage dice and see if you can like, piece together some of the stuff said. 93. Okay. I would say the big thing you're picking up is uh, he says it seems to be an unusual amount of energy. And she's not. Sh she seems completely not sure why he even bothered to call her in. He says the scan's correct, but you know. First of all, I don't even know how efficient this bioscan thing of your guys' is. Is was her first response on it. So it's like, unless you see actual effects, um, I'll call you. And she leaves. Who got her pennies in a bunch? Douglas. A little bit. Doug's over there doing the EKG thing is to out of the room. You know, or taking the wires off and everything. He's like, uh, well, they, they had a short thing for a while. But, personally, I don't think Sylvia's... She can be sexual, but cold. And like, like she said with my machine, she acts like she's never seen it before. Or stuff like this. Like foreign. So I think she's from another country. Maybe they didn't even like have marriage or release. You know, I don't know. She could be an alien. Ooh, could be. So what are you doing after this? Probably going home. Oh, okay. Why do you know where Trevi is going on it? Um... <laughs> No, I don't know that. I know there's a circus in town. If you want to go. Okay. 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 He seems happy. He's like... Wait, did you just ask me out on a date? Is that alright? It's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, you have a date. And... You're done with your appointment around, but you still have work doing other yep. stuff until then, anyways, when you're off. Yeah. Um, so, just give him a call, he'll meet you. Um, he'll be Aaron's meeting. Oh, shit. You, only thing you know is the night you stole. I Kitty. didn't steal it! 
You freed the kitty? It jumped in my bag. This is not her. This is gaming. <laughs> but the night that you did that... Who says I did it? The animals escaped. You don't... You really... You didn't let animals out. So that wasn't... You know, you don't feel, but it's weird that it happened the same night. So, that's all you know. Um... It's a big meeting with everyone in the company. And she says, it comes down to, we lost amphibian and avian. Uh, another amphibian, an insect, and a mammal. You find it weird that they like labeled them so exactly. Instead of like, cat or whatever. Unless, one thing you're wondering, do they even know about the cat? Because it was supposed to be executed. So they could think it's dead. Maybe it turns visible, it stays invisible once it's dead. Hmm. No, it's a uh, flash fry him anyway, so you threw in a pillow. Whoosh. Um, we've looked at it, and as a company we've decided that, uh, well, people are too important to send out to the swamp. Out here behind the Emma Labs is Sequoia... Or a sequoia. Seminole Swamp Reservation. There's swamp for a while before you get to the reservation. But a lot of it's all um, federal parks. And, uh, well, we made an agreement with the military down at Maxwell Fort. And they're going to uh, go ahead and do some search through out there. See if there's anything dangerous. But otherwise, I don't find it prudent to send people out into a alligator-filled jungle or swamp. So uh, we will not be going out there and looking for them, but if you hear about them, please let us know. Uh, military will be out there occasionally, just don't go out there. And uh, where was Linda? Where is Linda? She was supposed to be at the receptionist desk. Yeah, that's what I heard. That's what I told you. That's where I last saw her. Okay. Find out where she went. Will Let me know. Will do. Okay, and then she heads out. Everyone else is like looking you know, like, you got picked out. <laughs> <laughs> you got told to do something while we were all here watching. The rest of us will continue to be lazy. Feed animals. Animals we can't close the cages on, apparently. So, what do you do? Go look for Linda. Roll percentage dice on your intuition and tell me the number. 98. Well, then it really doesn't matter, does it? Not good enough. No, just kidding. <laughs> You're like, what do you want me to know? It doesn't take you long to realize, as you start to look around, there's a lot of commotion going out in the... Oh, final thing I should say about the whole appointment. Basically, don't tell anyone else. Don't make it known. Because if it becomes known, we're going to have to do something more about these animals and actively hunt them down. And they will probably just live out there. So... <coughs> Looks like one of those bulldogs. Yeah.
George Calvert, the first Lord Baltimore, obtained from James I a grant of lands near the James River, where he thought he and other Catholics might find a haven of peace. The actual grant was issued by his son, Cecilius Calvert, in June 1632. The Charter of Maryland contained the patents to the Lord Baltimore, then and in future, was noteworthy in its guarantees of freedom of government, even freedom from taxation by the crown, freedom of religion, Cecilius delegates command of the expedition to his younger brother, Leonard Calvert. He was accompanied by two Jesuit priests, Father Andrew White and Father John Altham, and in about 300 emigrants. They sailed on November 22, 1633, in two ships, the Ark and the Dove, and landed in Maryland, which was named after the Queen, on March 25, 1634, the day of Annunciation of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, they planted the great cross of wood and knelt around it while the litany was read. 